say you have a, a boyfriend, he's Vietnamese, right? And you're gonna meet his parents for the first time. Practice meeting his parents in the shower. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining. If you already subscribed, thank you so, so much. I wanna welcome anybody who is clicking my video for the very first time and let you know what this channel is all about real quick. So my name is Audrey, this is my daughter. Her name is Amelia Rose, we call her Mia. And my husband is name is Hui, he is Vietnamese. So based on the title of this video, you can kind of get why I learned Vietnamese. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some tips for teaching yourself Vietnamese or studying Vietnamese if you want to learn. So I, of course I have a very good motivation to learn because I want my daughter to speak both English and Vietnamese. Huh? Nai ơi? So today I am going to share some tips that are a little more advanced but I did share a video in the past which is kind of more of a beginner friendly video of how I started learning Vietnamese from the beginning. So if you haven't seen that, go check the card above or I'll try and link it down below. You can watch that video first or you can just stay tuned and watch this and go back to that one later. So it has taken me about nine years. I started studying Vietnamese in about 2011. So I've been studying for a really long time, not continuously, but I've just been slowly making progress. So I hope that Learning these tips from me will be helpful for you as opposed to learning from somebody who's never studied Vietnamese before doesn't know what to tell you to learn. So hopefully this video is helpful. Again, it can be used if you're learning Vietnamese, French, Korean, Spanish, Italian, whatever you're learning. I hope that these tips will be helpful. So tip number one is to say hard words and phrases. When I first started learning Vietnamese, I was afraid to pronounce things incorrectly and I would avoid saying them. So for example, one of the accent marks that's really hard for me is yo nat. Yo nat is like the little dot under the word. So for example, the word for mom is me and that has a dot underneath. I wouldn't even want to say me. If you're trying to learn a language and you find that there's something that you have a hard time pronouncing, like a word, chances are there's going to be a lot of other words you can't pronounce too because it's usually a sound. That's the issue. So for me, it was the yonat. I've also had other things where like T and TH, I get mixed up or um, just like, I mean, NG, Nguyen, that was hard in the beginning. So instead of avoiding saying things that are hard to pronounce because you're afraid of making a mistake, just say it and repeat, repeat, repeat because you don't want to avoid it and then not know how to say it forever. So if you're like me, I have a husband who is obviously fluent in Vietnamese because he's from Vietnam. So I can ask him to correct my pronunciation when we're at home. So then if you want to go out and say the words, you have more confidence. So definitely repeat words that are difficult for you to say. My second tip is to learn the differences between words that are similar. So in Vietnamese, every word is seven letters or less and most words are like one or two syllables. That means that the differences between how you say things come from the accents. And that can be very confusing. So for example, um, I just recently learned three words that are exactly, almost exactly the same. One is vai, which is shoulders. One is vai, which is skirt. And one is vai, which is lychee. So they are all similar. And I think it's easier if you learn similar words together. So then later down the road, you can tell what's the difference between them. Because for me, if I don't know, if I don't practice like all of them together, then I'll just kind of stay one in a situation. So say I want to say shoulder and then I would just say vai because I wouldn't know which one. I would just kind of decide to choose one and throw it out there and hope it's correct. And usually it's not. So. My tip is because there's so many words like that in Vietnamese that they're like almost the same, just learn them in a group. And then it might be easier to tell the difference between those words. My tip number three is to ask questions and make connections when you're studying. So if you have a native speaker that you can talk to, it's super useful to just keep asking questions. So for example, if I don't know how to say something, like say I know half of it and I don't know the other half, I ask me. Or if there's like a word that is similar to another word, but I'm not sure, I'll just ask him. So let me think of an example. Like, 
Okay, so the other day we were grilling and he was burning coal. I knew how to say burn, which is do, but I didn't know how to say coal. So I said, I you know, asked him what is what is coal, and then he told me that if you want to say burning coal, it's do pan. Do pan means to burn coal. So I think it's just important that you take the initiative to ask questions when you're learning because if you just tell a Vietnamese native speaker, hey, teach me Vietnamese. They're not gonna know what to say. They're not gonna know where to start because they because they speak the language doesn't mean they're a teacher, and they also don't know what you don't know. Hi, she's she's a little crazy. They also don't know what words you personally don't know, so they're not gonna know where to start. So you gotta ask questions on your own. Take the initiative to ask questions and then make connections, and it, hopefully that will be helpful. The next tip I have is to learn words that pertain to your life. So usually when you start to learn a language, you get a textbook and then there's chapters laid out with different themes and you learn it like in the in the set, right? But I'm here to tell you that that is not a good way to learn a language. Throw your textbook away. Your textbook doesn't know you and your life. So for me, for example, I find that words I use the most are related to food, or related to baby or related to like traveling weather or feelings i feel like those are the words i use the most so find out what pertains to your life the most like as a theme of words to learn together and then start there because if you start learning words that you're never going to use it's almost a little bit discouraging because you don't get practice and then you don't feel confident but for example, if you want to learn how to order food in a Vietnamese restaurant, learn words related to food and ordering food. So like, what is a menu? How do you pronounce all the Vietnamese dishes? Every time I go to a Vietnamese restaurant and I order the food and I pronounce the, the food correctly, the waiter always starts speaking Vietnamese to me. Or says like, oh, are you Vietnamese? <laughs> because I practice so many times saying the words pho, cung tam, bún bò huế, bánh mì. So I just know how to say it, and so that's gonna go a long way. So my tip is to just learn words that pertain to your life, and that way you'll have more confidence going forward. The next tip I have for you is to learn children's songs because children's songs are usually quite simple and easy to learn. I am already learning it because I have a child. So for example. Ready? Let me sing to you. Một con vịt suy ra hai cây cánh, nó kêu rằng quack 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 quack. Bố gặp hồ nước nó bị bà bị bỏ, lúc lên bờ với cây cánh cho hồn. I'm not a great singer, but that song alone taught me so many words. It's a song about a duck flapping his wings. So I learned about duck flapping wings how to say how an animal makes a sound, um, beach, water, like all these words are in this song. So if you find like a children's song, I'll link some of my favorite ones below in the description box so you can check them out. And if you find some that you wanna learn, learn how to sing it and learn the words that you don't know. And then you're gonna learn so much just from a short four line song it's gonna bring up your confidence if you can master even just one children's song. Tip number six is to practice speaking when you're like in the shower. So this sounds crazy, but this is what I do a lot. I will come up with like a scenario in my head and then I'll play it out, like pretend I'm this person and then that person, this person, that person, and I'll say the whole thing. Or, so like for a good example, for one, if you're new to Vietnamese and you want to practice something that would be useful for you, pretend you're, say you have a, a boyfriend, he's Vietnamese, right? And you're going to meet his parents for the first time. Practice meeting his parents in the shower. You're by yourself, there's no one there to judge you, and you have nothing else to do. You're washing your hair, you're doing your other stuff. So I find that this is the best time to learn because it's hard to find it's hard to find time to sit down with a textbook and study a language, right? It's easier to find parts of your day that you can practice your language as you're doing something else. So like if you're cooking, then like quiz yourself and see if you can name all the ingredients or like if you can describe what you're doing as you're cooking. I I just think that this is like something that everybody who's learning a language should do no matter what, even if you are doing a textbook. 
practice in your daily life because that's how you're gonna improve. My last tip for this video, and if you guys enjoy this, please tell me and I'll make more videos similar to this, but my last tip is to write down words that you learn. Write down new words. It's cool to learn a new word, right? You, you learn something new and you're like, oh, that's cool. Don't just say, oh, that's cool and then forget because you're not gonna remember it unless you write it down. So for me, I have Google Keep, which is just like a notes app on my phone, and I write all the new words down. So I have a long running list and then write your words down and then go back and review them. So you can either like read, your, read down your list every night or if you wanna make flashcards and then try and study that way, that works too. You can do online flashcards, whatever works for you and your study methods. So just always remember to write it down. Like it's so easy for someone to teach you a new word. Like, okay, uh, a deer is, is nigh, right? Which is what I call her, nigh. So you're like, oh, that's cool, nigh. And then two weeks later, you forgot already. So you gotta write stuff down. It sounds like such a like intuitive thing, but I feel like a lot of people don't write things down and then they don't make any progress. So write down new words as you learn them. Nayoi, do you have any other tips for them? Nayoi, nai dang lam zi dai, nai dang kwai phim vui me ha. Nai se noi ting anh ve ting vi. Ha. Please comment down below if you find these tips to be helpful. Subscribe if you think my angel baby is so cute and you want to keep watching her journey growing up and learning two languages as a baby. If you have questions, also follow me on Instagram. Send me a DM. It's at Mother of Fawn. And yeah, I'm always open to helping everybody who wants to learn the language. So give us a thumbs up, thumbs up. Is it nap time? Huh? Mm. We are done. We are out. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Say bye. Đi đến trường cô giáo như mẹ hiền Cô và mẹ là hai cô giáo Mẹ về khu